Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, joining you from the Emirates Stadium. The sun is shining and Arsenal have just come off the back of a really, really big win in the race for the top four. A victory at Stamford Bridge made in Hayland. Eddie and Ketia with a couple of goals. Emil Smith wrote on the score sheet too. And Bukayo Saka, of course, finishing it off late on from the penalty spot, putting those demons from the European Championships in the summer to bed um, it's a game that's brought up lots of talking points as you'd expect it's a game um, that has kind of really lifted the mood around the club again and I'm delighted by that because I think it's imperative that we're in much better spirits going into the remainder of the season if we're to stand any chance of making that top four but it's brought up a couple of talking points for me and I wanted to discuss those first it's Eddie and Ketia for me you know does this change anything with regards to his future does the fact that he put in this performance against a very very good Chelsea side um, okay, they weren't great on the night, but a Chelsea side that are the reigning European and world champions at Stamford Bridge. Does this change people's opinion as to whether Arsenal should be trying to bend over backwards, I guess, to keep him at the football club? Or is it pretty much as you were? Um, for me, it's pretty much as you were. Not because I don't like Eddie Nketiah, not because I don't think he's got the ability to go on and be a very, very good striker. But it's it's a really small sample size that we've got to judge him on, haven't we? And that's not his fault. That's obviously the way he's been managed. He, I think he mentioned in the interview that he gave earlier this week to the Beautiful Game podcast that he's only had something like 30 first team starts in the last five years since he um, signed his, his last contract with the club. So you can feel for him and, and there is sympathy on my part towards him, especially after having watched that interview. I really kind of empathised with him having seen that and, and you could see the frustration in him. You could see that this is a young man for whom football is everything. It's not about money. It's not about status. It is very much about pushing on and developing in his career but am I convinced based on last night and of course what we've seen of him in the past that he can go on and lead the line for Arsenal for many many years to come I'm not quite there I've got to be honest I think he offers something different to Lacazette in that he's much quicker across the ground much more willing and able I guess to run in behind and cause people problems that way so I think he gives us something slightly different but I don't think he's the answer to our centre forward problems in the long term which means in my view Arsenal need to go out and bring someone in and then what does that mean for Eddie well if he did sign a new contract I think he'd have to be accepting of the fact that he'd probably be a peripheral figure again and is he going to be okay with that is he going to like that is he going to take that I don't think he will just based on um, sort of that interview he gave and, and the fact that he hasn't signed a new contract yet despite there being offers I think it's pretty safe and fair to say that Eddie Nketiah is focused on going somewhere where he can play regular uh, first team football and and you can't blame him you know for for years and years we've kind of bemoaned the direction in which modern football has gone and we've talked about players who have been I quote happy uh, to sit on the bench and collect a paycheck Eddie Nketi is not that and we should be happy with that with the fact that he's not that and we should praise him for that because there isn't an awful lot of that left in the modern game so for Eddie I think the future is elsewhere I think he needs to go out kind of spread his wings play regular football because it's so often the case isn't it with players that if they don't have that momentum if they're not playing regularly it's very difficult when they are thrown in for 10 15 minutes here and there or in the odd cup tie it's difficult for them to find their rhythm quick enough to have an impact in the short window of opportunity that they've been given so I've got a lot of sympathy for Eddie as I say and I'm delighted with his performance last night I thought he was superb I gave him a lot of praise on the um, post-match reaction show and I thought he did excellently to kind of put all the noise about his future to one side and just go out there and play for the Arsenal and show what he can do. Uh, it would have been sweeter for Eddie and Ketia as well, of course, because of his history with Chelsea Football Club. He was there until he was 14 years old and then was released. Um, but he's very much an Arsenal man now. And I'm delighted for him, although last night's performance doesn't really change my view on what the future holds for Eddie and Ketia. The other topic I really wanted to touch on um, is the captaincy. I think there were a lot of good performances last night. I think that El Elneny came into the team and did a very, very good job. I think that Nuno Tavares, apart from one defensive lapse um, for Cesar Azpilicueta's goal, gave a good account of himself considering all that's been going on of late. I thought that Xhaka was superb in the midfield alongside El Elneny too. Obviously, the forwards impacted the game in the right way and that's what you want to see. But somebody I really wanted to talk about is Martin Odegaard because he was given 
given the captain's armband yesterday under really difficult circumstances if we're being honest this was an Arsenal team that had suffered three successive defeats against teams that on paper we should have beaten against teams that everybody expected us to go and pick up points against in our pursuit of a top four finish and there we were going into this game a daunting trip to Stamford Bridge the European and world champions um on the opposite side and and you were asking somebody to go out there take on the armband and lead the team and I thought that Martin Odegaard did a sensational job of that we talk a lot about his quality on the ball the the brilliance of his left foot the ability to drop the shoulder and spin away from people the way he can spot a pass the way he keeps the game flowing uh, and the way he can be a real tempo setter in possession but for me his best work last night was done off of the ball the way he closed people down the way he pressed the way he urged people on the way he ensured that when he was going into a press he made sure that the people following up in the next layer of the press were doing their bit as well because pressing only works as a collective it doesn't work in drips and drabs we've seen that in the past at this very football club we saw under Unai Emery we went through a little bit of a spell where we tried a bit of that but we weren't doing it as a unit we, it wasn't cohesive and you saw that fall apart very very quickly and us struggle so I think that Martin Odegaard's role is so so important not just on the ball but off of it as well um, he's always sort of at the referee um, sort of badgering him trying to get decisions trying to kind of influence things which is what you want from a captain you also want someone who can do that though with the right temperament the temperament that doesn't land them in the book but constantly asks questions of the officials and I think Martin Odegaard is, is the perfect man for that clearly believes in Mikel Arteta Mikel Arteta clearly believes in him as well and in his philosophy and in the way that he wants to play football and I think he's a great lieutenant to have out on the pitch to reinforce the messages that Mikel's trying to get across from the touchline. So lots and lots of, of, of praise for, for Martin Odegaard for me, even if I thought he was, was one who probably slightly went under the radar in sort of the post-match fallout um, last night. But for me, he's got to be the captain. Now, people talk about Kieran Tierney and the fact that Kieran Tierney's been taking on the armband in Alexander Lacazette's absence, obviously prior to his injury. It made me think that the, the decision was already made and that Mikel Arteta would be looking at Kieran Tierney and saying you're the next in line here's the armband and when Laka goes the natural decision would be to move it on to him but the more I think about it you know the, the injury problems that Kieran Tierney repeatedly has are a problem in this sense because you don't want a captain who's not an ever present you know nobody's going to play every single game and every single minute but you want somebody who's there 95 percent plus of the time and Martin Odegaard is that he's someone who when he's fit he plays when he's available he plays um, you know he's he's got a big influence on the team creatively but also has a big influence in terms of leading the press he's a good clean communicator um, and I just think that he ticks all the right boxes and I think for me you know I, I, I'd been saying it before I'd been saying it on the show in recent months that for me he was my choice for the next Arsenal captain but I think last night watching him off the ball which you might not have had the opportunity to do um, if you weren't in the stadium but really sort of focusing and, and doing kind of an almost a player cam on Martin Odegaard last night kind of really reinforced my belief that he's got to be the man that takes on the armband next I think it would be the right decision a smart decision and as this team continues to grow and develop together he's the type of character that you want at the forefront of it um, lots was being made yesterday of the fact that the team that Mikel Arteta fielded was actually eligible to play in an under 23s PL2 game that's how young that team was with just a few senior players sort of sprinkled in between so when you think about that the future is bright and yes there have been dips and yes there have been inconsistencies but whatever happens between now and the end of the season there's potential nobody can tell me um, that these players aren't behind their manager. Nobody can tell me that they're not united. Nobody can tell me that they're not together. And nobody can tell me that the majority of the fan base want this manager uh, or uh, want this manager out or this process to be kind of aborted. Because I, I think the support that you saw at Stamford Bridge last night from the fans that were in attendance is as clear as it needs to be um, that Arsenal are united for the first time in a long time in a number of years and yeah there were three defeats going into this game that were disappointing that were frustrating and led to people's emotions boiling over but you can't lose sight of the bigger picture and the bigger picture is that we are building we are moving forward and we will get to where we want to be eventually if we just continue to operate in the right way and do things the right way and I do feel like we are 
doing that at this moment in time. So keep the faith. Hopefully we can come back here at the weekend and beat Manchester United in what's going to be a huge, huge game. Win that and we're right back in this top four race. We are right back in it. It's not over. There's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of twists and turns, I believe, between now and the end of the season. So why give up hope? Don't forget, hit the like button. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be back with some more Arsenal and football-related content very, very soon. Hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts on Eddie's future. Let me know your thoughts on Odegaard as the next Arsenal captain in the comments below. I'll catch you all soon. Cheers.